Good morning. Come into this hour and welcome peace in place and cyberspace. Come into this hour and feel the love within and about. Come into this hour and release the weariness, the busyness, the wonder of what's next. Come, rest, be with one another. It is good to be together. Let's sing hymn number 12, O Life That Maketh All Things New. Please rise as you are able and remain masked as we sing. Good morning, and welcome to First Parish Milton. My name is Chris Clifford, and I am a member of the Worship Committee. We are so glad that you've chosen to be here with us this morning or joining us virtually. However your journey, whatever your heritage, and whomever you love, you are welcome here. Your presence here on Sunday morning enriches worship for everyone. This sanctuary is made holy by your presence. If you're joining us for the first time, a special welcome. You'll find information about First Parish in your pew. One of the greeters or I would be happy to answer any questions you might have. And any of us would welcome the opportunity to walk with you to coffee hour after the service. The work of living our faith is done both in and out of worship. So I call your attention to the printed announcements that came with your order of worship. Please take a look. There's an insert uh, specific to our Christmas evening uh, events that is probably very important. A couple of other things. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Jennifer, who was scheduled to sing this morning, won't be able to be here due to a non-COVID related illness. Uh, but Grace Eldorf, uh, one of our Hansiker soloists, has kindly uh, stepped in to fill that role. 
Uh, also, it's important to note that we are carefully observing all COVID protocols. Uh, we have ventilation across the front. So if anyone is cold, we do have blankets in the uh, back pew. So please feel free to bundle up if you feel the need. Uh, additionally, uh, social hour has moved inside. So we will not be able to serve food or coffee that uh, might be uh, our normal custom. But we would still like folks to join us for the opportunity to uh, have socially distanced conversations with each other and just catch up on the week. Now, let's take a few minutes to extend a warm welcome to old friends and new. Uh, of course, we do need to be COVID safe, so please stay in your pews. And for the folks joining us via Zoom, please turn on your cameras and share a few moments with the other folks who are joining us virtually. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Just a quick note for people who are on Zoom, we will have a social hour after, uh, which I'm going to host. Uh, so stick around so we have uh, company to talk to. Good to see everyone. Good to see you, Walt. Hi, Mary. Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm in the background here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, India. What? What's the other um, um, hymn number? I can't we see. Can I celebrate the sacred within and among us. We come to speak spiritual growth and understanding. We strive to practice acceptance, forgiveness, and love. Together, we work to build a world with justice and compassion. Come, let us gather together. We also, at this time of year, always have our Advent candles. So, uh, Reverend Lisa, would you? We light the fourth Advent candle for the power of peace, peace in the heart, peace in the home, peace in the world. May the courage to heal and reconcile pulse steadily in our hearts. May the wisdom of life's worth resound in our souls. This light shines in the darkness and says, fear not, peace still abides. So this morning is a very special morning. We are going to be welcoming new members this morning. And the wonderful thing about new membership in Unitarian Universalist congregations is that it means that our wisdom expands and our shared experience grows. Because we are not a creedal religion. We do not say you must believe a certain thing. We are a covenantal religion. We agree in covenant to principles of relating, to ways that we will be with one another, aspirations of being with one another, to bring out the inborn truth that is within each of us, because each of us are a bit of the universe. And the more that we see, the more that we share, the diversity of context and opinion and belief interweaves into the fabric of our congregation. So it is wonderful for us to uh, welcome three more members today. And uh, Leslie McPherson, our membership chair, will be doing the honors of the welcoming.
Good morning. I'm so excited. We have, so we have three folks, two of whom are here in person, one of whom is Zooming with us. So I'm gonna call up Ellen Barr and Casey Foster, please. And Jonah Bookman is on Zoom. Thank you. Yeah, so if you could just stand there. Yep. Just a little bit. So I'm going to read a little bit. They each wrote up a little statement. Uh, so this is Ellen to my immediate right. And Ellen Barr says, a long part of my working history was in teaching English to students of other languages. In addition to a long tenure at Boston University, I had shorter tenures in Monteverde, Uruguay, and Barcelona, Spain. All the experiences have given me a lifelong love for the language and culture of those regions and commitment to working for social justice. And on Zoom, we have Jonah Bookman, who some of you know, he's been around for a while and in fact is on my committee. And Jonah says, hi friends, glad to be joining you as a member of First Parish. I work managing an outsourced sales team working on an artificial intelligence technology solution, though please don't ask me to explain what that means. <laughs> I'm a Myers-Briggs INFJ and would best describe myself as enthusiastic, compassionate, and insightful. I could talk about running, cooking, and writing forever. I am also in a very committed relationship with my iPad. And then to my far right is, is, it says Kathleen, but she goes by Casey, Casey Foster, who says, I'm delighted and honored to be welcomed as a member of First Parish. I am grateful for the sense of community and belonging I've found here, as well as the time and space for reflection and inspiration that the weekly service provides. I'm grateful to be part of a community that puts its values into practice and welcomes people of all backgrounds and lived experiences. Thank you for inviting me to join. So now I'm gonna ask them to sign our membership book and I'm gonna give them a little present and then we will welcome them in together. Can we all join in and we will welcome them together as our newest members. We welcome you to First Parish in Milton. As members of this church, we welcome all to build a just and healthy world with faith, love, and compassion. We will count on you as you can count on us to speak the truth as you know it, to support the work of the church with your time, resources, and creativity, and to care for one another in times of need. Welcome. Thank you, Leslie. And yes, welcome Ellen, Jonah, and Casey. So last week for our Nature's Wisdom, when we were looking at joy, we talked about dogs. 
because the topic was don't postpone joy and dogs you know never postpone joy there, there's joy here there's joy there there's joy here there's joy there but i wanted to give cats you know equal time <laughs> and full disclosure i'm both a dog and a cat lover but cats have a different approach to joy i think most of you would probably um, <laughs> And today, uh, we're talking about the book of Ecclesiastes, and one of the um, most famous passages of that is, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. And for cats, you know, there's a time for every season. There's a time to cuddle and a time to refrain from cuddling, and it's not up to us whether they do it or not. So let's look a little bit at what cats might teach us about joy. Um, they have a more measured um, approach, I think, to joy. Um, but they do have a wisdom that grounds in joy, in life affirmation. One is that cats really do preserve their boundaries. You know, they're not um, overindulgent with others. They don't really uh, interact with others in the same way. They're, they, they preserve their boundaries. Um, they're unashamed in finding comfort, and often they will go to wherever the sun is shining and just take in the comfort, take in the nap. And they do nap often, um, and they will take a nap anywhere they can, again, often near the sun. They are their own comfort. They really don't look for others, for comfort. And cats are all, all, almost always, they're kind of near their feral selves, their wild selves. They know themselves. They have a connection to their original ground of being. And they're just, you know, hanging with us. They're allowing us to hang with them, to share the house with us. So these are some things that may, some qualities that may help us in terms of holding a sort of a deeper, softer, steady, kind of joy and life affirmation. So feel free to ponder that if you'd like, or to nourish yourself with body and breath, get in touch with your body. This is very important work for us to do every day, a time of stillness to welcome breath and the body we inhabit. If you would please, in your gray hymnals, turn to 558 and we will do a responsive reading. For everything there is a season. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. time to plan and a time to pluck up what has been planted. A time to break down and a time to build up. A 
time to mourn and a time to dance. time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to keep, a time to throw away. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time for war. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A passage written over 3,000 years ago. It speaks of the flow of life, of the lack of control in life, of the equalizing effect that nothing lasts in life, 
of the invitation to live into what's next. If nothing lasts, how can we find meaning? If nothing stays the same, how can we find our grounding? These are questions that Kohelet had. There's something about each season that comes and goes, something about living it while it is upon us, something about that yes we spoke of last week, something about our innate capacity for joy, even in the turmoil. The book of Ecclesiastes is part of the Hebrew Bible or Old Testament. The writer begins with a lament, vanity of vanities, this ancient Hebrew preacher cried, all is vanity. What does one gain by all the toil at which one toils under the sun? Kohelet, the assumed Hebrew preacher of Ecclesiastes, is thought to have written around the time of King Solomon, a time marked by the pursuit of wisdom in that culture. This writer is not identified, male, female, maybe even Solomon, Solomon, maybe a student of Solomon, we do not know. So in my reference to Kohelet today, I'll use the they pronoun. Kohelet spent much of their life trying to shake a profound sense of meaninglessness and purposelessness. They worked earnestly through study, fieldwork, and research, traveling far and wide only to come upon a deep disappointment for their efforts. Kohelet came to discover that the answer, the big capital A answer, is not something that can be fully determined for all time. I've seen the business that God has given to the sons of men, to humans, to be busy with, this ancient seeker bemoans. God has made everything beautiful in its time, also, God has put eternity into the human mind, yet so that one cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Seeing the futility of the big answer pursuit, that such knowledge is not in one's capacity, the preacher fell into a deep depression, hating life, because the solution to the problem of life could not be found. All things are full of weariness. A man cannot utter it, they wrote. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. But something still spoke to the urge to live and to find life. Kohelet came to realize, even amidst depression and cynicism, that finding enjoyment in one's toil was the gift of one's God. That in fact, the toil, the struggles, were answered by the ability for joy in one's being. This preacher who sought the truth in the world eventually found it in the heart. That enjoyment was the key to whatever one does. Whatever your hand finds to do, Kohelet concludes, do it with your might. For there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol, which is the realm of the dead, to which you are going. In fact, Kohelet finds it, it is surrendering to the mystery, the fullness beyond understanding, where a sense of meaningful life can be found. I know that there is nothing better for them, humans, than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Also that it is God's gift to man that everyone should eat and, treat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. Now, it probably wouldn't surprise you to know that Ecclesiastes was one of the three books hotly contested within councils for three centuries. It took a long time to come to the Bible that you get now. Over three centuries as to whether it should remain in the canon of the Old Testament, whether it should be included in the permanent collection for all time. Even then, preaching joy was countercultural a counter voice to the shame, blame, guilt, control measures of those in civil and religious authority. 
Go, eat your bread in enjoyment. With enjoyment, Kohelet preaches, and drink your wine with merry heart, for God has already approved that you do. In other words, be present to your life however it is. That perfect wisdom you seek and constantly fall short of is an illusion. The wanting, the striving, the never quite enough is the main cause of your unhappiness. We tend to overthink our lives. We tend to underestimate our being. We tend to look for that better life as we dismiss the beauty in our presence. We drive ourselves with assumptions of what we should be doing, of how we are supposed to be, the perfect shape of our body, of the ultimate goal of a good life. We think we're getting something done when we can find something wrong. We think we're being wise and humble when we focus our minds on how we fall short of what we could have been or must someday be. We often not only find things wrong in our life, we often blame ourselves. We often find ourselves as wrong. Steeped in guilt and shame, regret and resentment, we cannot find our way. Tara Brock, contemporary psychologist and Buddhist, known for her teachings in mindfulness and emotional healing, profoundly addresses this self-diminishing tendency we have in this culture in her book, Radical Acceptance. She writes, if we're holding back from any part of our experience, if our heart shuts out any part of who we are and what we feel, we are fueling the fears and feelings of separation that sustain the trance of unworthiness. Isn't that a great phrase? The trance of unworthiness. She describes in psychological terms that I believe Kohelet came to realize. Finding joy in one's heart rather than chasing after the wind, living the mystery rather than solving the problem of life. So often we think our lack of well-being has to do with all the obstacles in our lives when in fact the obstacles to our well-being is the way we see our lives. If we're looking for a circumstance to define our happy state or a partner to fulfill our happiness or a livelihood to create a happy home, then we are looking in wrong places and will find our well-being dependent on things we spend our whole lives trying to control. But the ground of our being, the place of wholeness, the center of our happiness is wherever we wholeheartedly encounter the living of our lives, which is far more astounding than we could ever create on our own. Some of the obstacles and challenges we encounter in our lives overwhelm us and take command of our attention. It's hard to let go of attachments to ways of being and expectations of life. But when we see that we become, when we see, we become more effective, more loving, more accountable. When we embrace what is in our lives, then life changes from a problem to be solved to a mystery to be lived. Any moment within that mystery has its own power of love and life within it. If we but give ourselves permission to believe that it is there and that we are a part of it. When we believe that we are worth our own being, then ways to work out of the stuck places begin to emerge. Tara Brock shares a practice that can address what she names the trance of unworthiness. She calls this a practice of radical compassion, a step toward the freedom of active, mindful acceptance in the living of our lives. She uses the acronym RAIN, 
And I'm just going to give you a little bit of what she talks about. If this interests you, if this, if this does seem to resonate with you, I recommend that you read further about it. But I'm going to just share the little bit of her practice called RAIN, R-A-I-N. The acronym helps us remember the process. So R, recognize what is happening. So when you have some disturbance, some stress, some grief, some feeling of shame, whatever it is, take a moment to recognize what is happening. A, allow the experience to be there just as it is. Take a moment, you recognize it, and you go, oh, <laughs> this is what this feels like. Not giving any stories to it, just this is what shame feels like. This is what stress feels like to me. I then investigate. Give yourselves the permission to be curious. How is it affecting your body? How it is, a, is it affecting your energy? And then N, nurture with self-compassion. Find a way to understand that this is a natural feeling, something that is, you've been conditioned to feel, so I guess more conditioned feeling, and nurture yourself, self-talk, whatever. Give yourself the hope and the willingness to heal. Recognize, allow, investigate, nurture. What can also help in the nurture time, the self-compassion time, which is sometimes the hardest for us to do, it's not an indulgence of that state of being, it's an int intentional gesture of kindness towards ourself in feeling this, whatever it is. And what can help at that time is to have some form of meditation, some form of just centering down into yourself. And of course, breathing is the easiest. The time of stillness we do every week is a way to do it, to nourish yourself. And you can do the different breathing and you can breathe in love and breathe out peace. You can breathe in peace and breathe out love, whatever you want. That's something that you can do, for example. Or you can sit and picture yourself being bathed in light. Just for a minute, picture yourself surrounded in light, touching the light within. Things like that. Find different meditative aspects, a little practice that helps you. You feel free to talk to me. We can talk about something that you might like. And there's plenty of podcasts and books that would help you with that. One of the things that we can also do is open to the sky. Just open to the mystery. Know you are. Whatever is going on is a part of the whole thing. And there is a harmony that you can find. Eckhart Tolle, contemporary theologian, writes, beyond the beauty of the external forms, there is more here, something that cannot be named, something ineffable, some deep inner holy essence. In spiritual traditions throughout humanity, there are countless names and glorious reachings to this eternal essence, what Kohelet called God. Kohelet realized that trying to figure out one's life to name the ultimate meaning of life leaves out the simple fact that we did not create life. How could we possibly know its limits? How could we possibly get it all right? You know, we can feel secure in our limited worlds. We can love our misery, for at least it's familiar. We can blame others or our situations for our plights. We can imprison ourselves in resentment and self-pity. And we can justify our unhappiness with superb eloquence and long lists of orchestrated reasons. When we face our lives as they are, we must come to the understanding that our limitations are not cause for disdain. And who we are is far more powerful than who we are not. Now that may sound simple, 
but most of us yearn to be who we are not because we fear that who we are is not enough. And I'm going to testify right there. I felt that. How many of you? Let's say an amen for those of you who know that. We often feel we are not enough. Our ancient preacher of Solomon's time, letting go of their need to contain the wisdom of all time, remarked that a handful of quietness is better than two hands full of toil and a striving after wind. So you're in good company. This was written over 3,000 years ago, okay? So this is a human condition that we both have and can find healing from. Finding life as it is, this preacher came to the conclusion that opening to joy, the uncontainable fullness of life in all that one does, is the gift to embrace he they say, for he will not much remember the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. So when you come to a weariness and feel the vanity of life, know it's your striving that makes it so. When you think you have it all together and become surprised at a loneliness within, know it is your exclusion of life's fullness that makes it so. And when you haven't the energy or faith to come into the fullness of whatever moment your life is navigating, know that there is a belonging, a sacred essence, a center within you and all of life that holds you and embraces you. Know also that there is help available in friends, loved ones, counselors, books and podcasts to steer you from that trance of unworthiness. To everything there is a season. You are invited to it all. So may it be. Amen. So let's sing together hymn number 1059 in the blue hymnal. It's May Your Life Be As a Song. It's a short one, it's a goodie. So what we're gonna do is just sing it three times through and if anybody wants to join in on the round, those of you that know how to do that, feel free. So please rise as you are able and mask. May your life be as a song. We're gonna sing it through three times. Let us join in the spirit of prayer. 
to center in and know that our aspirations for harmony, for the feeling of love can be heard. Sacred and holy essence of all of life known in many ways and by many names, we reach to you for recognition, for connection, for love. Thank you for the light that is ever present in the warmth of luminous darkness. It all works together. May we find that way of being. May we understand that wisdom. May we see the medicine ever available in nature and each other to ground ourselves in our lives to see them as worthy. This is a rough, rough time. We are tired. We are constantly surprised. We are not sure what's going to happen. We long to be in connection. We are relational creatures. Help us, O oh Holy One, to understand connection in our imagination, in our energy in our deep recesses of our own being. Let us be gentle in our brokenness and share when we can and envelop ourselves when needed in warmth and light, in rest and love. Let us reach out as well and as we can to all who suffer, to all who are fatigued, who, to all who cannot feel life worth living. May they, may we find a way to connect to that gift we have been given. And for all the prayers locally and given amongst us, but unspoken, may we hold them in love. Amen. Today's offering will be dedicated to the services and ministry of First Parish. If you are zooming in, you should on your screen see a number that you can text to 617-539-2576. If you're here with us today on your cell phone, you can text to that number 617 617- 539-2576 with the amount that you would like to give. Please do not add words. Simply put the amount. You will get an automatic text message back asking you uh, to do a one-time setup to create the account with a credit or a debit card. After the one-time setup, you can simply text the number with the amount to give and you'll be automatically debited from the account of your choosing. This is contained. Oh, seven. seven. I think my glasses fall from the mask and I do apologize. <laughs> so, uh, 617-539-7576. Sorry. And 
The offertory song will be by Dion Dristam, our Hunziker, one of our Hunziker soloists. May these gifts be transformed in the strength of this faith community, into comfort, food, and shelter for those in need. And may we be transformed by Jesus.
and I read the benediction of the month. Joy is within us. When our spirits sag from the weight of the world, may the power of our connections lighten our way. As I put out the candle on our chalice, may the fire of our faith burn within us and lead us into this next week. Have a good week. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Morning.